We're here today on the banks of the Tyne Estuary in Gateshead, right next to the confluence where the River Derwent, one of the major tributaries of the River Tyne itself. The recovery of salmon and sea trout stocks in the Tyne is a well-documented story, and that's as a result of improvements to water quality from the 1950s to the present day, to the extent that now the Tyne is the best salmon river in England and Wales. The story of the River Derwent has not been quite so positive. The River Derwent was dammed over 300 years ago, right at the start of the Industrial Revolution. And that dam prevented salmon and sea trout returning from their time at sea, getting upstream into the Derwent catchment to spawn. During the Industrial Revolution and afterwards, the development of steelworks and coke works and other industry on the Derwent further caused problems for fish populations by creating pollution. The Environment Agency wanted to improve this situation and restore sea trout and salmon stocks to the Derwent. We developed a partnership and in 2012, we began construction of the first major fish pass on the Derwent at Derwenthof a short distance on stream. This fish path was completed in 2013 and for the first time in over 300 years that allowed salmon and sea trout to begin to return to the Derwent catchment to spawn in the river upstream. Since that time, working with Gateshead Council, with the Tyne Rivers Trust and with other partners, we've constructed further fish passes as we move upstream through the catchment, allowing salmon and sea trout to move progressively further and further towards the headwaters. This journey concluded in 2019 with the construction of a fish pass Shotley Bridge, which has finally allowed salmon and sea trout access to the whole of the River Derwent catchment. Here we are at Derwent Hoff, a short distance upstream of the confluence of the River Derwent with the River Tyne. You can see behind me Derwent Hoff Weir, the first major obstruction on the Derwent catchment. A very significant structure that completely stopped salmon and sea trout from being able to migrate up the river to their natural spawning grounds. You can see the fish pass on the weir, which was the first major fish pass that we built on the River Derwent in partnership with Gateshead Council. There were some particular challenges associated with building the fish pass at this weir because due to the industrial legacy of the site, the ground underneath the weir was contaminated. So we had to take particular precautions to ensure that none of that contamination was released to the river. That was done, the fish pass was completed successfully. And since 2013, salmon and sea trout been able to move past Derwent Hoff Weir, up the River Derwent, to continue their spawning migration. So here we are at Lynxford Weir on the River Derwent. This is the next significant barrier to fish upstream of Derwent Hoff. The fish pass was installed here in 2016. It opened up a further 11 kilometres of spawning ground for salmon and sea trout. The fish pass that's been installed here has been really carefully designed to mimic the natural cascade of the river. It's made of a series of boulders which create steps so the salmon and trout can gradually work their way up to the top of the weir. A partnership working approach was adopted to make sure we could create a project which would have multiple benefits, not only for fish passage, but for the wider environment and society of the Derwent Valley. We realised that the Environment Agency weren't the only people interested in improving the river. Lots of other partners also wanted to come together to celebrate the industrial and the cultural and the environmental heritage of the whole Derwent Valley. We did extensive research into how the industrial heritage of this site had impacted on the natural heritage so that we could determine what we needed to do to improve it. By working in partnership on this project, it's allowed us to protect and enhance a significant part of the heritage of the Derwent Valley.
Aidan Pollard, our fisheries manager to Tyne Rivers Trust, with a lifetime involvement since 1971 with this valley and its community. The decline of heavy industry accelerated in the 1980s, the closure of Constant Steelworks and the Derwent Half Coke Works. The community of Derwentside suffered terribly economically, 35% unemployment. The river was battered by serious pollution at the same time. Surprisingly, both communities have improved in parallel through community, effort, partnership and public funding. It's a positive indication of how we as a community care for our local environment. Recent electrofishing services by the Environment Agency and the Tyne Rivers Trust have found juvenile Nile salmon as far river as above Shotley Bridge, which is quite a remarkable achievement. And this was achieved without artificial stocking. We're here on the banks of the River Derwent, about 10 miles southwest of Newcastle city centre, and we've been completing an electric fishing survey on the Derwent here itself. So we've been passing electricity through the water so that we can collect fish from the river to check on abundance, species ID, and see what the rivers are like and what's thriving in our waters. So in particular, we're interested in trout, eels, bullheads, all our species, but also the enigmatic salmon as well, of which we've caught numerous ones today. I'm standing at Shotley Bridge Weir, which is a 300-year-old structure uh, built historically to provide water for an old paper mill. Uh, but back in 2019, we built this fish pass um, that enabled migratory fish and resident species like trout and grayling to move freely up and down the river. On completion of the fish pass, um, all those species were now able to move from the Derwent Reservoir all the way down to the confluence with the tide for the first time since this weir was built 300 years ago. So the weir is about a two metre high structure. Um, so to allow fish to get past it, we built what's called a rock pool fish pass. Um, it's basically a sequence of six pools that gradually get deeper, um, enabling fish to swim through, uh, gradually getting higher and eventually swimming up and past the weir. We've also built this side channel um, that becomes operational in high flows. Uh, it basically gives fish another option to move upstream, particularly when flow through the main fish pass might be a little bit less favourable. It was a great project built in working in partnership between Tyne Rivers Trust, the Environment Agency and the Marine Management Organisation, but also couldn't have been completed without some great support from the local community. We're now at the top of the River Derwent catchment and you can see Derwent Reservoir behind me. We're over 20 miles upstream of the confluence with the River Tyne and our programme of fish pass works has seen salmon and sea trout able to swim all the way from the confluence all the way up the Derwent right to the reservoir. But this marks the end of their journey but they do have the whole of the catchment downstream to spawn and breed in where young salmon and sea trout will live and then be able to continue that cycle of swimming out to sea and coming back to repeat the spawning process. There are now salmon and sea trout in all 20 miles of the main river Derwent, which is a remarkable recovery considering back in the 1950s and the 1960s, the river was to all intents and purposes devoid of fish. We're now looking at opening up some of the major tributaries of the River Derwent to salmon and sea trout. And we're starting to look at tributaries such as the Burnhope Burn, which join the River Derwent just downstream of the reservoir. And we'll be working with our partners and interested parties to see what options there are for restoring salmon and sea trout populations to the Burnhope Burn and other tributaries in the future. <laughs>